Hello guys and welcome to today's video. This video is supposed to be your all-in-one punctuation guide. This is more meant to refer back to when you have a question or when you don't understand something. It's not necessarily meant to be studied per se. But if you want to, go for it. Skryftekens or punctuation. Just a few things you need to know before we get really started with this episode. You need to know what is a syllable, what is an open and a closed syllable. So a syllable is how you break down a word. You, we can do this by clapping. For example, flirtatious. So you can hear the different parts. Flir, te, and shis. Flir ends with a consonant. R is a consonant. And all words that end in, all syllables that end with a consonant is a closed syllable. All word, all syllables that end with an vowel is an open syllable. This is very important to remember. The only thing you actually need to know. The copy uses. Or in English, it's called the circumflex accent. So the copy is mostly used when we turn a short vowel sound into a long vowel sound in an open syllable. You see that? Open syllable. For example, e. it's not e, it's e. You can really emphasize that e. You can hear how we make it long. I just put in a shortcut key for you guys there. And the, another example is r. It's the plural of your back. R. Fair and fair for tradition's sake. Like you would say, Far, we say fair. Same thing. For example, a kijk fair or a kijk fair. These you can use them in either way. Uh, we just more commonly say a kijk fair. We don't really emphasize it that much. Dielteken or diuresis. It indicates the start of a new syllable, and it is mostly used. When vowels start heaping, for example, coordinata. So you can see we break the syllables up. I posted on the right hand side in the brackets, coordinata. It's not coordinata. There's a big difference. Geet. It's not geet. It's geet. You can see you can see where it starts the new syllable. And then we have the accent. We have two types, the acute and the grafis. So the acute, or in English, the acute accent is used to emphasize a, cert, a syllable over another. For example, uh, not yet. If a word has two vowels, both get the acute accent. For example, moet. You see, moet die bal skop. The boy must kick the ball. Mut. The boy must kick the ball, rather than just saying, the boy must kick the ball. If there is an I, the other vowel receives the acute accent. For example, D. D sien moody ball scop. This boy, rather than saying, the boy, this boy, D sien. If there is only an I, then the I gets the accent. You see, an is a means the boy is a person, or the boy is for certain a person. Not for certain, but you get the point. Some strange words have the accent already built in. It's part of the default word. For example, cliché, souffle, and fouchier. Cliché and souffle we know, but fouchier is a surname. Like I said. The grave accent is the other is the other accent, and it has the exact same purpose. The only reason, the only places we use this, however, is in authentic Afrikaans words as well as French loanwords. For example, de, ne, and he. But uh, you can also substitute the grave accent for the acute accent. But you cannot, you cannot substitute the acute accent. Or the grave accent. 
de is is um, is used when we say give me something de give for me and um ne is used when we try and have someone affirm what we're saying the sien is a means ne the boy is a person right he is asking what he what's he he hey, what are you saying and then it's also used the french and french loan words like fresh and ampere the afkapangsteken or the apostrophe it is used in plurals and verklaringsvormen of nouns that end in i o and e like for example kwetuki kwetus we haven't done verklarings yet but we'll get to it so that is a pretty unique feature to afrikaans it makes the word small we'll get into that at some other time for example kwetu apostrophe ki a little photo with dus you add an apostrophe s to make it plural it is used in plurals and for clearing form of nouns where the last a is accentuated for example uras mas pas you can hear the a that i am that i am pronouncing it's it's prominently pronounced and therefore it gets a, a, a apostrophe s ra ma pa you hear that a prominently it's not you the apostrophe is not used when we when the a is not emphasized for example omas opas malfas padas these do not receive the apostrophe s mas and pas is just your mother and your father ra is just the afrikaans Ray, Omas is your grandmother. Opa is your grandfather. Malfas, just a type of plant. It is used in plurals and verklarings form of proper nouns where the last e and s is silent in its singular form. For example, ter blanche, ter blanche, celir, celirs. It's like saying the Flintstone rather than saying the Flintstones. You see the s added here. The afkapangsteken part 2. It is used in plurals and for claiming form of letters, numbers and symbols. The entire alphabet, all the numbers on symbols. For example, as and siki. Multiple a's and there's a little c. when we indicate one or more sounds that are not pronounced for example gien turns into gen daar is geen bal nie there is no ball you can also say daar is geen bal nie so you can you see how we omit the double e we place the double e with an apostrophe sen is used to show possession the ball is the sien sin you can see this is in its passive form but you can you can use it in its active form it would be dit is piet se bal in the passive form we say die bal is piet sin so the word really stands on its own but it can be almost interpreted to be a replacement for the word se as de ware it is really so Hy het as te ware vir Sari geskop. He really kicked Sari. Daar, daar is. The I is omitted and the S it forms now part of daar is. It is used in plurals and for claimings form of soortname that is represented by numbers. I don't know what soortname is in English. But Google tells me it's class names, even though I'm pretty sure that's wrong. For example, Drinol Dries. So all guns of this type is grouped together by the number Drinol Dries. The koppelteken or the hyphen part one. It prevents the compounding of nouns of, of vowels. Sorry. 
For example, foto omslag, the photo cover. See any uitputting, or the depletion of your nerves, or being at wit's end. Prevents ambiguity or double meanings. For example, boer, rather than saying boer. Uh, boer with two O's, not three, is a drill, or to drill. It is used in geographical proper nouns. For example, South Africa, South Africa, the Middle West, the Middle East, and Asia Minor, or in Afrikaans, Klein Asia. It is used to combine proper nouns. For example, the Nelspreit Hospital. If you take a look down here, all of these different forms are valid. You can use them in any sort of way. Klein Asia, I would just like to bring your attention back to there. You can see how I say Asia here and not saying Asi. Because you remember from the previous pronunciation video, I said I E together makes the sound E. But now the syllable is broken up. So these two vowels don't belong together anymore. It's E. R C Y. R C Y, not R C. <laughs> the couple taken, part two. It is used for compounded titles. For example, Postmeister General or Postmaster General. Some joining nouns use hyphens. For example, Oud Testamentis, Pro Indies, A Freistaat, and Oud Freistater. Old Testamentis refers to being Old Testament like or something being Old Testament like. Pro Indies, pro Indian, are phrase starts. Depending on your context, it generally means not to do with a free state. Old phrase starter, someone that came from the free state or is no longer um, a former free state free stater. Words with goed and hulle as the last part. For example, Bahle and Pitgut. It's used in different contexts. Contexts. You'll hear this probably when you talk to Afrikaans people. This is when you try and put it down on paper, just remember the hyphen the hyphen. Compound nouns with symbols, numbers, or abbreviations. The BA grad or the BA degree and Pintwe Gevier. Point two to gun. The couple taken, part three. Repetitive compound nouns. That was my best translation attempt. In Afrikaans, we'd say, It literally means when we put words together and repeat it. For example, flight, flight, and no, no. Flight, flight, if you translate it directly, it's whistle, whistle. But in Afrikaans, we'd use this, for example, in a children's book. Flight, flight, my story is eight. Whistle, whistle, my story is done. And no, no, just means a bit later. Axel, no, no, school good was. I'll wash the dishes now, now. Woordgroep verbindings, gekoppelde bepalings, and compounds. Samenstellings in Afrikaans. For example, Kruikie roer my nie and tref en trap ongeluk. Kruikie roer my nie refers to someone being very stubborn and tref en trap ongeluk is a hit and run accident. Joining nouns with Latin word groups. A bona fide student or a good faith student, a ad hoc besluit or a to this decision. Connected surnames, places and dialects. For example, the adjunct civile ingenieur. Please just note on where we put on this hyphen, so we don't add the hyphen between civile and ingenieur. It's added between adjunct civile. The two titles, um, adjunct and civile, goes together, and then because that describes the type of engineer, engineer, and the engineer is on its own. So, ingenieur, I also want you to take a look at those three letters, three vowels that goes together. I, I, 
Ooh. It's not it's not one it's not one sound that is made. It's two different sounds. So it's e and u. I and e u that is added in its different groups. So it's pronounced ingenieur. Ingenieur. You can hear it. Just writing adjunctive ingenieur without any hyphens. I prefer you rather do that so you don't make mistakes. That's also correct. We also use hyphens at some exclamations. For example, ah. Compounded language names. For example, Griqua Afrikaans and Kaaps Hollands. Those are just different ways of talking Afrikaans. We'll get to that maybe in the future. The hyphen as an apostrophe. Okay, this is, this is important. We do use this. The hyphen when it is used to show an omitted word. Pat in spoorvervoer. Pat vervoer in spoorvervoer is the full name. But you can omit vervoer from pat if, you, if it's used in the same context and put together. Pat in spoorvervoer. Pat vervoer is, uh, is transport via roads and spoorvervoer is transport via railway. Mans in Damaskuna, same thing, man's shoes and women's shoes, except in Afrikaans we say men's and women's shoes, we add them with a hyphen and it shows we're talking about manskuna in Damaskuna, but we just say manskuna in Damaskuna, ah, mans in Damaskuna, counting words with n. For example, 43 or 43. I don't want you to use hyphens when you write it like this. 43, don't write it with hyphens. Because what happens is you would tend to only add an apostrophe between certain of the words. You need to add them between every single word. And this gets hard when the, when the count, when the number gets very large. For example, 343. 343. So, 300 hyphen. 3 hyphen. In hyphen 40. I don't want you to use it because a lot of people forget to add it at the last between the last n and the last a last number. So rather just say 343 without any hyphens, then you'll get full marks. Okay, so look at Mans and Damaskuna for example. Mans hyphen n no hyphen Damaskuna. That's another way of writing it. And that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I hope this helps. Leave a comment down below where you are still need some help. I'll try and explain it in the comments and pin it, like it, whatever. Yes. All right. I'll see you guys in the next episode.